Professor Kiho Kim and Professor Jesse Mailer, please come forward. And This one is for Jesse. <laughs> and it says Department of it, Environmental Science on it. I hope. No, no, no. And while they're sitting down, I will just say what they did. They created an introductory sequence for the Bachelor of Science degree in environmental science, designed common rubrics to highlight student learning outcomes, and explained how outcomes are stressed in individual courses and how they'll be assessed. That sounds like what the award is supposed to do. Congratulations. Next, Milton, you want to stay there. You can stay there. All right, but the award I can talk about? Good. This is Milton Greenberg for those who have not had the privilege and the pleasure of knowing him. <laughs> and the award to be made is the Milton and Sonia Greenberg Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Award, which recognizes a faculty member who's made a significant contribution to research-based analyses of teaching practices or curriculum design. And the winner this year is Professor Teresa Larkin from the Department of Physics in College of Arts and Sciences. You can come up even if Milton won't. I'll hand this to you and then I can finish reading. Okay, so uh, Professor Larkin is an internationally recognized expert in education and assessment with a so special focus on STEM education for college students in non-science degree programs. STEM, in case you don't know, is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. For her research on writing-based pedagogical methods and learning style assessments in the STEM classroom, as well as assessments of active learning technologies inside and outside of the STEM classroom, it's our pleasure to recognize you. Our third award is the Teaching with Research Award. And as you may have noticed, sometimes we give two people awards because there are so many good people who meet all the criteria for our awards. So would Joe Campbell and Ed Stasek please come forward. The Teaching with Research Award recognizes faculty who creatively incorporate original student research activities into course experience. We have two winners, uh, Professor W. Joseph Campbell from the School of Communication and Professor Edmund Stasek from SPA's Department of Public Administration and Policy. So you get to do the heavy holding. They're actually pretty light. Thank you. Thank you. While I explain, so what is it that you did? Uh, over the years, hundreds of Joe Campbell students have been introduced to the rewards of conducting original research at the Library of Congress. Um, for enabling students to gain familiarity with this exceptional research institution in our backyard, sort of, and by encouraging students to draw insights from close examination of primary source materials, we're pleased to recognize Professor Campbell. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And Edmund Stasek, who shares the award, is recognized because of his exceptionally engaged and active involvement in the doctoral program in his department, not only teaching doctoral students, but also co-authoring with them. Professor Stasek has had a significant impact on the next generation of scholars in the field, as evidenced by the many accomplishments, achievements of the doctoral students with whom he has worked. Congratulations. All right, you two get to have your picture taken. Okay. The next award is the Jack Child Teaching with Technology Award, which as you may know was named after Jack Child, uh, who unfortunately passed away, but was the first director of then the Center for Teaching and Excellence. We have two winners, Donna Dietz 
from the Department of S uh, Mathematics and Statistics in CAS and Beverly Peters from the School of Professional and Extended Studies. Uh, CTRL's Jack Child Teaching with Technology Award honors faculty who have demonstrated creativity in using technology in their teaching. Again, we have two winners, Professor Donna Dietz and Professor Beverly Peters. We recognize Donna Dietz for her ingenuity in designing educational mobile apps as a way of helping students put their digital devices to good use wherever they happen to be. <laughs> Professor Dietz has created her own device agnostic, yay, uh, mobile apps for students to study for her exams. Congratulations. <laughs> Beverly Peters is honored for her use of a great variety of audio, visual, multimedia, and mobile <gasps> technology uh, in her online, online and face-to-face -face classes. Professor Peters also continues to serve as an exceptional resource for other faculty interested in teaching with technology. Congratulations. <laughs> And one more announcement to make, and it has to do with an initiative that CTRL launched with the library and the Office of uh, Information Technology and the Office of Communication and Marketing this year, and that is to really start thinking about how we want to create and foster uh, mobile pedagogy, mobile teaching. Use those devices, put them to good service. And for that, I will introduce Laura March from CTRL, who is the coordinator of faculty technology initiatives, who will tell you a smidge about the award that we have given to some people. Go ahead. Wonderful. Well, thank you all. I'm here on behalf of the Mobile Learning Task Force at AU, and I'd like to thank all of the faculty, staff, and students that have taken our surveys, attended our events, and give a big congratulations to the winners of the 2014 Mobile Pilot Year Initiative. And the following instructors are using mobile tools to increase student learning opportunities, enhance student interaction and engagement, and build learning communities. I'd like to recognize them now and ask them to stand as I read their name. So Derek Cogburn from SIS. <laughs> Jill Klein from COGOD. Diane Lowenthal and Beverly Peters from the Washington Semester Program. <laughs> Thomas Nassi from Seth. <laughs> Thank you all and congratulations. A number of us in this room have been around AU long enough to remember the first teaching conference held 25 years ago. Among those in the Silver Celebrants group is none other than our president, Neil Kerwin. There are few people on this campus who know American University and higher education better than Neil. No, he was not here when the cornerstone was laid in Hearst Hall, which is where CTRL is housed. But he has witnessed and been instrumental in bringing about the curricular and the intellectual flowering of our university. Neil has graciously joined our plenary session today to help us reflect on the past, celebrate our accomplishments, and look to the future. Our president, Neil Kerwin. Thank you, Neil. <clears throat> Thank you, Naomi. That was. Uh, probably more gentle than I deserve, but nonetheless. Um, I do remember the first Ann Farron teaching conference before it carried the distinguished name that it does now. And uh, I want to join Naomi in both commending and thanking Ann Farron for her leadership over the years. Uh, that is evident, I think, in every school and college's program of teaching. And to my colleague, Milton Greenberg, uh, who set uh, the kind of context at this institution that made a conference like this uh, not only natural, uh, but something that didn't need to be promoted so heavily 
uh, that we all felt intimidated if we didn't show, all right? Um, the, uh, the conference itself, to me, makes a profound statement about the values of this university. It's always held just before we begin class in the spring term. Uh, it's a day that would normally be thought of as the last day of break and vacation. And yet each of you and thousands of colleagues who came before us uh, have found the time to join together to talk about things that are at the very core of this institution's purpose. And those are the elements of teaching and learning that bind us together, no matter what our disciplines are, uh, no matter what it is we spend our time as scholars studying. Um, this conference has been characterized also over the years. If someone, if the, the young person with the, uh, the phone was going to confront me and ask me, what do I remember about these conferences? Uh, what little I remember at all anymore. Uh, I would have said, this conference traditionally deals with difficult issues. Uh, issues related to uh, diversity and inclusion things that will be with us for as long as we are a university. Uh, issues of technology, when the question was if instead of how. Uh, questions about uh, the responsibilities we have when exercising academic freedom and the limits of those freedoms uh, and the kind of consequences that we bear as a, an industry, as a field of study, uh, as a mission. Uh, when those lines are crossed and damage is done. And today's no different. Uh, today we're, we're dealing with, as the provost will lead us in in a moment, a series of discussions uh, that are confronting American higher education today in a way they never have in all of my years at it. Uh, I, I'm privileged to sit on the board of the American Council on Education. Uh, and on the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities. And the issues uh, of uh, how we account for what we do are more pressing today, more important today, than they have ever been in my life. And I suspect they will become even more persistent uh, and more intense. Uh, Naomi told me that uh, in advance of the meeting, she asked you and our colleagues uh, who can't be here today, what are the most important issues that ought to be addressed uh, at this conference? And let me read a list of some of the things that came up. Uh, the cost of what we do to our students. Uh, great inflation, which is brand new. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time in my 40 years uh, in higher education that I've heard the term great inflation, so somebody will have to uh, translate that for me. Um, as a matter of fact, we've determined now that the first time that that term was used was at the University of Bologna in 1108. <laughs> and uh, it was a persistent issue then. It appear, appears to have some legs, OK? Balancing teaching research, with research. I mean, one of, the, one of the really distressing conversations I hear more often than we should in this country uh, is that much of the inquiry we engage in is useless. It doesn't provide any great utility or any immediate utility. And as a consequence, needs to be sacrificed uh, so that we can spend more time uh, with students and in learning. Integrating technology with teaching, which is something I think that this institution has done to a commendable extent already and has great challenges ahead. And student intellectual engagement, which in many ways is one of the great issues of our time. Uh, you know, how do we ensure that uh, the generations of students that we're responsible for don't see what they're engaged in here as purely instrumental? How do we find a way to ensure that uh, uh, the measure of what we accomplish uh, isn't in a first year starting salary, uh, which we see creeping now, uh, frankly, into the highest levels of public policy discussions? Well, the way we do that is with the last issue you all brought to the table, and one that I think is going to dominate the conversation this afternoon, and that's the issue of learning outcomes and assessment. Uh, I can remember when this discussion first started at the national level. Uh, it is now a dominant part of the conversation about how we and other institutions are held accountable for our work. 
It is critically important that this university continue its leadership in defining learning outcomes and assessing our performance against it in order to be ready when the critics come calling, because they will. Uh, we are about to engage in a biennial process of middle states reaccreditation. Uh, I've been around here long enough for this to be my fourth. Um, this one, uh, even more so, we're going to be, we're, we will be asked to determine not just what each of our degree programs, and in some cases our individual courses, consider the outcomes we want for our students, but what is the universal experience for the American University student? What will the university as a whole promise every entering student, regardless of field of study, whatever major or minor uh, he or she might uh, take on? Uh, and I, I know that, uh, as we have in the past, together as a faculty, uh, we'll be able to address that, that issue very, very effectively. Uh, I want to close by, by, by saying that, that this conference, uh, I cannot imagine that 50, year, 50 years from now, uh, some president will be standing up here talking about how proud she is or he is uh, of this institution's persistence uh, in this mission. Uh, we are a great university. We are a university whose impact on our individual fields uh, is profound and will grow each year. At the core of what we do, both in our scholarship and our teaching, is to advance learning, to advance understanding, advance appreciation for the world around us. This conference for us is an elemental part of that mission. So thank you for all you've done, uh, and good luck with the exercise that's about to start. Good. Thank you, Neil. I think you got the sense that something's about to happen. I think you looked at these signs on your tables if you got the email that um, Provost Bass and I sent to you that we're about to engage in a really important activity. And because there's so many of you who made it here, this is a grand opportunity to have an incredible amount of input for what we're about to do. To start us off, I give you our esteemed provost. Thank you. Provost Bass. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. And what we're going to do, what we're going to work on, is what we would call making the implicit explicit. Learning outcomes, assessment, is not a new issue to us at American University. We have uh, measures and identified learning outcomes for general education. Many of you have done that within your courses. Certainly schools have them. We have them within their majors. But as the president said, what is the umbrella, what is the broad set of outcomes we expect of our students when they graduate? And we have um, probably pretty good alignment as to what those are. And we, as I said, they are implied in much of what we do. But our task now is to make that explicit. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll make that explicit. Uh, on the screen over here and in your folders, are what we call draft AU learning outcomes. <clears throat> so you can pull those out and you can take a look at them. And on those learning outcomes, we're derived from learning outcomes are something that is part of the national dialogue. And what I've done and what we have done is draw from the many existing products that exist about learning outcomes institutionally and reflected on what we have here at American University. <clears throat> In specific, the Educational Testing Service did a meta-analysis of learning outcomes that have been published over the last decade, and they have then summarized that in an aggregate form. We have then taken that and put our own work on it. The deans have worked on it. Uh, Karen has worked on it, and what you have is a draft summary that builds on many of the things we already know well here. Nonetheless, our task is to define and clarify precisely what those learning outcomes are going to be 
as we look to the future. And the process that we're going to do go through, and Karen will talk about that in a minute, will end up with those learning outcomes for all of us to share, for all of us to publish, as a result of the extensive input we're going to get from over 400 people, 400 faculty who are part of the American University community. So it is a level of uh, participation that may be unri unravel unrivaled, that won't be unraveled, <laughs> and that um, <laughs> will be at each of your tables. And we will work with each of one of these categories, each one of the outcomes will be a topic at your table. So I'm going to give the microphone to Karen to work, walk us through exactly what's going to play out in the next 35, 40 minutes. Karen? Hi, everybody. <laughs> OK. I actually have a separate microphone. I'll use this. Um, Scott has given you some information about what, uh, why we're doing this. I just want to emphasize that one reason why we are looking at these learning outcomes at an institutional level is um, what I've heard from many people in the process of doing this, and even in the comments that you made when you said what are issues in, in higher education right now, they often mention specific learning outcomes. Many of you mentioned uh, writing, critical thinking, what expectations are in the job market, and so on. All these things are really things that we've been thinking about as an institution for a long time. But when Middle States um, Steering Committee did, their, did the self-study, one of the things that we noticed that was different here at AU than maybe some other institutions is that we really haven't made those expectations explicit. And for issues of accountability, those are things that would be important for us to probably do. So one of the recommendations in the self-study is to make these learning outcomes more explicit. And what better place to really work on this than a group of faculty here from every school and college, many different disciplines who all have an interest in making sure that students learn. So today, what are we going to do? Um, in your packet is, are the AU draft learning outcomes. And uh, we've put some extra copies on your, on your tables. Um, many of your tables, especially if they're the larger tables, have a facilitator at your table. So facilitators, if you haven't already identified yourself to your table, can you just raise your hand and, and make yourself known? Thank you. These, these, these folks have graciously agreed to help guide the discussion. And uh, many of them are either from the Committee on Learning Assessment, or they've done really great things in assessment in their own department, or they have an interest in assessment. Um, if you do not have a facilitator, we would appreciate somebody at your table volunteering. Um, so what we're going to do is each one of your tables you see has a standard with a topic, uh, one of the learning outcomes. Your facilitator will help you guide that discussion. There's also yellow um, sheets of paper that have the questions that we'd like you to discuss. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to link here to the blog. Um, so we'll, we'll link to the blog. And so if you have somebody at your table that has a, um, a device like an iPad or even a mobile phone or a laptop, just simply log in with your EagleNet ID and password. And what we're going to do is record your comments and um, go from there. Now, if you have any problems, you can feel free to raise your hand um, and we'll try and help. If, you, if there's a table here that nobody has a mobile device, um, not likely, <laughs> but if there's a table here where nobody has a mobile de device to do the recording, we do have some extra iPads demonstrated by Richard in the back who has demonstrating the extra iPads that we have. Um, simply raise your hand and they will help. And Yvonne, do you want to raise your hand in the back? Yvonne is also here from my office and she'll be here to um, help with questions as well. So um, we're going to take about 30 minutes. Um, for this discussion, and um, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, otherwise, we will go forward. You have some questions? Yes. Do you have a question? <clears throat> okay. Um, the other thing you can do, and I, at the risk of, of getting, nobody ever wants to text me anyway, but if you would like to text me with a question, my, my email, my phone number is, is also on that um, yellow sheet. 
and you can text me and I will come to your table. Thank you. Okay, so go for so it. Go for it. <laughs> okay, thank, hello, can we come together? I just wanna recap what's going to happen. Karen, you can have this. Thank you, let me explain what, what's gonna happen in the process as we go forward for the rest of the year. Is this information, and please make sure you download your information, put it into the blog, so that we have that. The process will be a funneling process. All of this information will go into Karen's office. There will be a synthesis and a summary by each of the different learning outcome categories we've identified here. That process will result in a document, which will be work. We have a Senate Committee on Learning Outcomes. We'll work with the Senate Committee on Learning Outcomes, and at the February Senate meeting, we will take this information and present it to the Faculty Senate for a review by the Faculty Senate for an, eventually an approval. Uh, if all goes well, and I think it, I, I'm confident it will, that at the March uh, Senate meeting, and we've had these conversations with the Faculty Senate, there would then be an approval of an explicit set of learning outcomes for uh, the campus. We would then use that information to then develop a mechanism, a series of mechanisms where we can actually uh, identify and provide evidence, uh, provide measures that assure that all of our graduates are indeed meeting the kinds of outcomes that we expect as faculty such that when they graduate, we have confidence that the learning outcomes that this faculty think are important are indeed achieved by our graduates. So with that, that is the process that's gonna go forward, which is information coming in, a funneling process, a narrowing process, identification of specific learning outcomes which may go beyond this list, may be shorter than this, this list, work with the existing Senate committee, going to full Senate, eventual approval. So that's what's gonna happen in the rest of the year in terms of the work done here today. With that, let me turn it to Karen in terms of some, some of the ideas of uh, the future. Hi everybody, thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Um, in terms of the other things going forward, in terms of the nuts and bolts, um, if you have not uh, posted from your table yet, um, please take the time to do so before you go, or if you've been writing notes by hand and you think that someday you'll get them into the blog, um, it's probably better that you hand them over to me, your notes, and uh, that way we, we make sure that we get those notes. We also recognize that one of the neat things we did is we tried to get people from different disciplines talking about um, learning outcomes that they may not traditionally be. So it's not like we stacked the communication one with the School of Communication and the writing faculty, right? We wanted to make sure that we got very different perspectives. So that being said, you may have been at a table that was about critical thinking, but you really have some ideas about communication. Or you may have been at a table at teamwork and you have some ideas about critical thinking. We want to encourage you when you go back um, today and over the next few days to feel free to post on the blog if you have any other suggestions or comments. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is that the next step really will be the Committee on Learning Outcomes. We'll take a summary of what we've looked at and we'll make some suggestions to the full Faculty Senate. And um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Senate Committee on Learning Assessment for all that they do with assessment at AU, those of you who work on your department assessment plans and so on, and those of you who are department chairs know that this committee really does work tirelessly. Every fall when you turn in your annual assessment reports, this committee does a lot of work to provide you feedback. They've had a lot of discussions in terms of trying to advance student learning assessment. So um, with, the with the people who are on the Committee on Learning Assessment or have served on the committee at some time, please stand so that you can be recognized. Uh, thanks very much. So um, the other thing is that obviously the most important part after we get these learning outcomes developed is we really need to be thinking about how we are providing opportunities for that student learning in each of our um, disciplines and we need to be thinking about ways that we can assess it. Uh, we've already been thinking about some of those things in terms of assessment, for example. Many of you know that there are going to be some pilot programs and e-portfolios. That's a great place for students to provide examples of student work in particular areas of learning outcomes. Um, so we're looking at lots of different ideas, but as you're thinking about these things and um, you have some suggestions, please either post them to the blog or you can email me 
at kfrostlid at american.edu. Also, if, you're, if this kind of piqued your interest in learning outcomes and you'd be interested in working on this or helping us on, with this some more, if you would please see me, I would um, love to take some volunteers for some folks that will help us in vetting this a little bit more. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Naomi. Thank you very much, Karen. And thank all of you for your brainstorming. We've all had class, classes break into small groups and have discussions. And we know we have to move the class along, but there's so much energy going on in those conversations, you just don't want to stop it. Maybe the university could save on its heating bill if we could bottle the energy <laughs> that I saw coming out of these conversations. Uh, you all get a break now, believe it or not. You know, about 15 minutes. You could check your phones. You could do whatever you'd like. The next set of sessions will begin at 2 o'clock. Um, but wait, there's more. There's an, but wait, 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 wait. Wait. Yo. Did that work? Okay, thank you. Um, so we have two sets of sessions this afternoon. And then, and then. We will come back together again for a reception with all kinds of good things to eat and all kinds of good things to win. You must be present to win. We have lots of nice prizes, but you must be present to win. This year we did not use um, little tickets. Instead, we have your registrations. We know who has shown up, and we're going to electronically pick you and reward you. So. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and um, I hope to see you soon. Thanks.